How's it going, everybody? My name is Austin Kieger, and I am with Dr. Joe Klimzeski and Dr. Kevin Brunacini, and we are the Flexible Dieting Institute podcast. Today, we're going to talk about pre- and post-workout meals regarding flexible dieting, and we're kind of doing a little continuum of a previous episode of meal spacing. Uh, every day when I'm in the gym, people ask me, uh, what's the best meal to eat before and after a workout? Is there a time frame that I need to eat? Like, is there an anabolic window really that I need to have after my workouts? Is it okay if I don't eat anything before I work out? So we're going to cover a few of these and I'm just going to kick it off right away to Joe. Joe, in, in your experience, you've worked with a lot of athletes. You've worked with a lot of general population. You've, you've been around for a little bit and I know you've worked with just a lot of people. So I want to get your opinion. Where do you go with people that start asking about, let's say the anabolic window. We'll start there. Like, do I have to eat 15, 20 minutes? Do I only need protein? Do I need protein in the carb? Like, or can I wait two, three, four hours? Like, what would you say to something like that? I just noticed that Kevin and I both kind of chuckled there with your, your getting close to that ageism line. Uh, Joe, you've been around forever. How, how did you, how did, how did you handle Theodore Roosevelt's nutrition? <laughs> he was a client. Um, so I, I put a little softer tone to it. But <laughs> you kind of trapped yourself in that. I, like I, I saw you trying to wiggle your way back out. Uh, uh, but it, no, great first question because doctors Ivy and Portman, I think it was Portman in, gosh, maybe the 80s came out with this book, Nutrient Timing. And they were in Texas as exercise physiologists working with athletes. And they came up with the whole insulin model of, you know, if we're, if we're, putting ourselves in that state of post-exercise status where, you know, you're, you're, you're screaming for recovery, you're in this catabolic moment, then to, to even get amino acid uptake improved, there needs to be insulin and what can drive insulin in that environment, carbohydrates, sugar. So they had everybody in that era carrying around maltodextrin, dextrose in their gym bags. Everybody's slamming down 75 or a hundred grams of pure sugar with protein powder right after workouts. And that was the law for a couple decades. So then came along other researchers and they were like, I don't know, you know, maybe it's okay to wait 30 minutes or an hour or two. So a lot of research started pushing that line. And I have to say, first of all, I, I I'll save this for a, a little segment in a few minutes. Pre-workout is critical. I mean, pre-workout is important for any athlete, physique athlete, even general population, recreational exerciser. But post-workout, it kind of depends on your goals. And I'll let you guys address this a little bit. But I still think even though that's been a little bit poo-pooed as being critically important, I still have a question of like, why not? If you can get protein, which staves catabolism, and you can get some carbs, which increases anabolism right after training, why would you not? Like, Maybe research shows you don't need to as critically, but if you can and you really want the best recovery, why wouldn't you? Yeah, that's a great point. Kevin, I'm going to throw it right back to you as well. What do you, uh, how do you approach with your clients and stuff regarding pre and post workout nutrition? Um, since Joe kind of brought it up, let's, let's kind of aim for pre-workout. Like we know that it's important, but do you have people that are like, I absolutely cannot eat like in the morning, like I'm going to go work out in the gym every morning. I can't eat. I don't want to eat. Like I just get nauseous. How do you approach something like that? I should preface that all my clients are general pop. So I'm not dealing with advanced athletes um, or, you know, if it's not impolite to say remote athletes. Um, but to that point, not a majority of my clients are not necessarily focused on exercise at first. Um, so with that said, it's sometimes not a conversation for some time, uh, especially as we're getting started. It's just, it's just not on their forte or on their horizon. But nonetheless, it's when it is something that they feel ready for, or it's, you know, inevitable to now have to discuss it as whether it's a tactic for weight loss or just overall well being. Um, it's usually an enlightening ex conversation because most of them have just never thought about eating anything before exercise they just assume just just exercise there you go and just think nothing of it but you know the whole advantage of priming the pump so to speak and you know providing the body with some sucrose you know some positive nitrogen uh, from protein you know that's certainly going to help with 
anabolism and prevent catabolism as you're going through the exercise and whatnot. So um, we can get all cute with what is suggested. I'm all for Reese cups, much like Joe is. I'm sure you're the same with Austin. Otherwise, I don't know why we're friends. But you know, it's it doesn't have to be cute. It can be something cleaner, quote unquote. It can be a banana, but you know the the specific number of grams is very dependent. Not to mention the type of exercise that to occur, how long that's to occur, how frequently they just ate prior to. So there's a lot of evaluating prior to to make that call. But generally speaking, you know, we'll just say 25 grams of of a carb source. Some protein would be great. Uh, not much, you know, maybe 10, 15 grams. Uh, but for those that don't want to eat anything at all, to answer that, um, it's, I know we're, I know all of us could probably discount what glutamine has said as far as the research, but you know, there, as an, as a tool, you, one could have some glutamine powder, drink that as a protein source if they don't want something solid uh, as a pre, pre-nutrition or pre-workouts. So having some glutamine can help, you know, get in some protein without uh, having that in there, having a bolus in their stomach. So um, that can be something if if needed, but honestly, it's not been something I've had to suggest at recently if that's the case, but it's a tool to do better. So, but I'll hand it back to you, Austin. No, those are, those are great points. So I know with my people, I, I, I have a lot of like physique and barbell athletes, but I also train a lot of general population, people like one-on-one and and those individuals speak a little bit more so on, they just can't stomach and eat anything. So like you, Kevin, I also suggest, I, I try to figure out like what it is that they can't stomach. Is it a specific food or can we get something in? Can you do a piece of toast? Can you just have like a hard boiled egg in the morning? If, if it's absolutely nothing, I can, I just feel like I'm going to puke. Uh, I, I suggest uh branch chain amino acids just because they're kind of a fruitier flavor we metabolize those amino acids right away. It's something they can put in their water and kind of sip on. And even just that slight difference uh, to just their their fluid intake, if you will, and, and just getting into the gym and sipping on that, they can kind of feel not like, like energy, like jittery, but they just, they feel better as they're getting through their workout. So that's one thing I like to suggest if they can do something simple to your point, even if it's a Reese's peanut butter cup, just something to kind of get them a little bit of a, a shift in their glucose levels, maybe a little tiny bit of protein or something just that they can use while they're exercising. Uh, I like to have that conversation and just see if there's something that they can do. Um, I know that there's a couple other big questions with this type of stuff. So I'll throw this back to you, Joe, kind of a, a two different questions. One, I know people are like, well, if I, if I don't want to drink anything, I just want to wake up and go. Cause I don't have a lot of time. Can I eat a bigger meal before I go to bed? And is there some carryover into exercising empty stomach? And then the second part, uh, and Kevin, you brought this up and I think it'd be good to get both of your opinions on this is does food quality matter before and after a workout? So Joe, I'm going to, I'm going to throw that. We'll go with the first question. Can you eat something? You know, what do you tell someone? Can I just eat a bigger meal, more calories, sleep six to eight hours, wake up and go. And is that fine? How would you approach that with that client? Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a bad question because you will restore a little bit of your glycogen levels. And so you may feel a little better in the morning because of that. But I, I would definitely count that nighttime sleep as a break in the day, even though I don't like to consider just a daily weigh-in when I talk about progress and so forth. We look at weekly net weight loss and monthly weight loss. So I don't want to confuse people when they hear me say, no, a 24 hour cycle is important because with that, that sleep cycle, it does change what is happening physiologically with growth hormone levels and, and available blood glucose, liver glycogen. So I would say it's not going to be an, an amazing difference. And I understand the question, but I would say probably just stick to your normal patterns and it's not going to be that big of a deal. But the the, the bifurcation point is some people, because they are more fat adapted and they just don't, ha- they don't need that much energy. Perhaps they're not world record seeking power lifters and so forth. And they, they feel fine working out. People can work out in the morning fasted and they can be, they can do great. But for those people who really feel like they're tanking and blood sugar is getting low, some even inter-workout glucose can make a difference. So I have an early morning client who has lost about 40, 50 pounds. He's super lean now, single digits, not an athlete who's going to go, you know, compete in the Olympics, but he trains extremely hard. 
And I have to tell him, matter of fact, I have a couple of clients to go get a Gatorade. Like you're, you're bonking. Like I can see it. You're shaking on the leg press. Like you're, and as soon as they start getting that, you know, catch up in terms of, you know, CA, not catch up like the food condiment, but as soon as they are catching up on blood sugar, priming the pump, as, as Kevin said, uh, you know, they feel better and you get a so much better workout result. So I still think even if it's a liquid form, some kind of, of energy source secondary to body fat is helpful because, you know, the difference is the, the parasympathetic nervous system. As soon as you eat a huge meal, you may feel like your gut is heavy as we've all described and you don't feel like working out. So keep it light. You can do something liquid. You can do something small. Uh, to, to very to be brief, and then I'll let Kevin answer this. You know, food quality. I still think people need to stay aligned with their health values. Don't eat a pop tart or a Reese's peanut butter cup or a donut pre workout just because you think somebody said it's better. It's not better. It's okay. You're you know that's a time if you need something a little sweet or you want to have a little indulgence, you're going to use that as fuel. I like the simplicity of it, but you could also have a rice cake with a little jam. That's simple. You can have a half a banana. That's simple. You can have Gatorade. That's simple. But I'll, I'll let Kevin go ahead and take a swipe at that. I don't know what else to say. Been said. Um, I would say when it comes to food quality, if, if if that is a if that is a health value, then it's just something to be aware of. If you are eating something with a little bit more fiber, then or just more fibrous carb versus more simple carb nature, then just be aware of where you're going to work out that if it is more fibrous, you're probably going to have some, some GI distress. It seems a little extreme, but you might just have some GI issues during the workout where it feels a little bit more heavier than usual. If that's the case, then maybe transitioning it to more of a simple carb in nature can give you that same pump without having the GI heaviness. That's what I would say from a, quality source uh that's where it could be a an issue otherwise choose what you want what you love that aligns with your health values can't go wrong i would also say before giving it back to austin to close us out experiment like there are things you can eat that that do digest well and when you prioritize a pre-workout meal so that you are fueling your best workout even if your goal is body fat loss you, you have such an opportunity to fuel a workout that those calories you put in pre-workout can give you a net negative. Like you work out so much harder and you burn so many more calories because of that energy that it was almost like a free addition. And, and whenever I have clients experiment trying to tip the line upward a little bit in terms of how much they consume to, to fuel a better workout – it's, they almost never want to go back because it's like, wow, I am really crushing it now. And those workouts, I mean, those are the sacred part of your day like that, especially when you are trying to lose weight and gain lean body mass. You don't want to skimp on pre and post-workout nutrition to support great training and great training recovery. No, nope, those are great points from both of you. So meal timing, variables experiment, try different things, see how your body handles certain foods. If you're not a big consumer of whole foods in a morning workout, liquids can be beneficial. So we hope that you guys took a lot from this and hopefully it helps you. And please, if you feel like it does share it with other people, uh, we're, we've got a lot more big topics coming up down the pipeline. So we look forward to seeing you guys in the next flexible adding Institute podcast, and, uh, we will see you in the next one. Thank you.